Good morning. Welcome to North American Martyrs Parish. Our entrance antiphon is located on page 6 in the Missalette. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, 
though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise God's Spirit. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never thirst again. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you do not even have a bucket and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, you are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place of worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, the disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman, but still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here it, the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. 
When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. John 4, the woman at the well. This has been my favorite scripture passage for a very long time. We get to see this woman, and if you can study and know it, she was an absolute outcast. Have her, and then she has her whole life changed by Jesus. So first, I want to explain the situation of this encounter at the well, because we miss a lot without knowing the details. And then second, encourage all of us to have these kind of interactions with Jesus. So to begin, we have to understand this situation with its two parts, who this woman is and how Jesus changes her life. With this woman, we are introduced to her by hearing that she comes to the well at noon. Right away, you have to know that something is wrong. Because think about it, when do you need water? When does the average person need water? They need it right away in the morning. Because there is no un- indoor plumbing at the time of Christ in this, in this history moment, the whole village would be coming in the morning to retrieve their water for the day. But it's at this time in the morning that the well becomes kind of a social hub. In the morning you see everyone and you kind of chat about what's going on in the community. But for this woman, coming at noon to draw water already kind of reveals that something isn't right And so why? Why does she come late in the day? Later, we actually hear why. In the conversation, Jesus asks her to go get her husband, and she replies, I have no husband. Jesus, replying, not in condemnation, not in a judgmental tone, just affirms that she has had five husbands and is currently with someone who is not her husband. The woman came at noon because she wanted to avoid other people. Her marital struggles and current life choices with another man who is not her husband essentially made her the subject of other people's condemnation and judgment. They most likely treated her poorly, which led to her feeling shame and feeling like, I have to isolate myself. I don't want to see other people. But where is Jesus with this quote unquote shameful woman? He is talking with her face to face. No, not in a permissive manner, telling her, oh yeah, just do whatever you want. But he is meeting her in order to offer her a different way of life through a loving invitation. In short, this is just a real, authentic encounter with Jesus, and it leads to her true conversion. And what's the end result? It's during this conversation that the woman's understanding of Jesus progressively changes. I know it's a longer reading, but if you go back, you can, you can hear how she addresses him. At first, she simply calls him a Jew. Later on, though, it changes into sir, which is a respectful term. And then it keeps going and it deepens when it says, you must be some sort of prophet. It goes even further when finally in the end, she says, are you the Christ? By the end of the whole event, this encounter with Jesus has her running out to people that she was trying to avoid in the beginning and then telling everyone who will listen that she met Jesus, the Savior of the world. What I want to unpack for us today is this is exactly the point of why Jesus came to the earth. The main point is that Jesus wants to step into people's lives no matter where they are, so, as to, so that he can receive them with love and then guide them to a better way of life. This woman, she wanted to isolate herself, and she probably felt stuck, like, this is just my situation. But once she gave Jesus an opportunity for real face-to-face conversation, she went from isolation to proclamation. She couldn't keep her new joy to herself anymore. Everyone, Jesus is not meant for people who feel like, I've got it all together, I don't need any help. 
And we constantly hear that this is what the Pharisees' problem was. They're like, well, we don't need any help. We got it all together. Instead, Jesus is for people who look at their life and say, I need help. And honestly, that should be every human person. We're all not perfect. We all mess up. And humans have their own unique baggage that we have gathered throughout our life. And it's those places that Jesus just sits and waits for us to meet him there. Those areas that we think, we, we humans think that we're stuck with because this is just how life is, are the exact spots that Jesus is right there and he wants to meet us and just have a loving, receptive conversation. This woman at the well, she talked with Jesus at a place of her greatest shame and isolation, and then he changed everything. My invitation for all of us this Lenten season is to review those exact same places in our hearts and in our minds, those places that we kind of flinch from, the places that we feel like we have to avoid, that we come at noon to, And it's there that we have an honest, sit-down conversation with Jesus. Because he wants to turn those places of hurt into a source of strength. So in summary, the reason why I love John 4, the woman at the well, is because Christ demonstrates who he truly is. He is the remedy to our illnesses. He is the solution to our problems. So as we continue this Mass in the quiet parts that happen, And during your prayer this week, picture Jesus just sitting in those places in your heart that you want to avoid, and he's lovingly looking at you, wanting to talk. Ask him, what do you have to say about this place that I find myself? Ask him, what do you say about my situation? Or ask him about your past or your present. Know that there is always going to be love in the look on his face, but there will probably be a bit of a challenge there as well. In prayer, I want you to consistently encounter Jesus at the well, because if you meet him there wherever your well is, he's going to change everything for the better. And now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. It was again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And in all of our needs, we offer these our petitions to our Heavenly Father. That Christians everywhere may respond to the word of God during this holy season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that God's people may worship him in spirit and truth and reject the temptations of evil. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have rejected God may turn to him and know his loving mercy in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. That through sincere confession of their own sins, those gathered here may be at peace with God and one another. Let us pray to the Lord. That the water of the Spirit, welling up to eternal life, may purify our dead, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of Alvin Reichmuth, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the needs of all here present, for which we now pause to pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you met the woman at the well in order to demonstrate where you want to meet us in our prayer lives. Please grant these our petitions if they are for our salvation and the salvation of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And the mystery is water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. The humble spirit of God, now accepted by you, Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive, to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks 
and with the angels, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon is located on page 100. For anyone who drinks it, says the Lord, the water I shall give will become in him a spring welling up to eternal life.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are looking for help and donations for our upcoming Embrace Grace baby shower. Please see the bulletin to sign up. These expecting pregnant moms are so thankful for our church community welcoming them with open arms. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join our Thanksgiving prayer. O sacrament most holy.